Imagine a car that has a camera built into the dashboard that recognizes you when you get into the car and sets the temperature you like, or better yet, doesn't start the car if it's not you. That's one of the things that Ford is working on with Intel, and that is coming up next on the Fastlane Car. We've uh, kicked off a project that we call MOBI, a research project, and MOBI stands for Mobile Interior Imaging, leveraging interior imaging systems, again, data analytics capability to enhance the driving experience. But rather than me talking about it, I'm gonna show you a quick video that demonstrates what might be possible as we go forward in the future. How can we improve the driving experience if we combined interior cameras with existing car sensor data and the driver's behavioral patterns? What if you had the ability to peer into the car from anywhere in the world using an Intel phone? Aside from looking for your child's favorite toy, you could also check that no one is in the car that shouldn't be. Did you forget something? Simply launch one of Moby's cameras and search the car's interior. What if we could identify different drivers with face recognition and enable different user preferences automatically? Let's say I'm the owner of this Ford Explorer. The system, which we named Moby, is checking my facial features to confirm that it recognizes me. The in-cabin experience is personalized by displaying information specific for me. My schedule, music, contacts, and communications. What happens if a passenger enters the car and you have private information displayed? Privacy mode is communicated to the driver in two ways. The heads-up display will show a lock icon, and the center console is filtered to display only navigation. All other personal information has been removed from public view. But what if Moby doesn't recognize you? In that case, it will send your picture to the vehicle owner, who can approve you to drive the car or not. Laura is a new driver to the car. Laura's image is captured by the front-facing cameras and sent to the Moby app on my Intel phone. I'm able to set permissions based on Laura's driving ability, and I can also specify the features that I would like to enable or disable. The center screen is now a simplified user interface with limited functionality. Of course, I can always deny approval as well. In that case, the cameras would monitor the unwanted driver, and Moby would send me status updates until the situation was resolved. What if your car's interior cameras could sense who is reaching for the center screen and allow that person the safest way to find what they need? While I'm driving, I reach to enter a destination on my navigation system. Since the car is in drive, the system is helping by asking me to speak my destination aloud. But when Laura reaches for the screen, the cameras can sense it's the passenger, not the driver's arm, that's reaching for the screen. Cameras that decipher natural gestures together with simple voice commands may one day eradicate the need to dig through submenus to turn off those automatic windshield wipers. This car has a dual sunroof, and I just want to let some sun in not hunt for the right button. So I can point to the ceiling and say, open. I can see that Moby's listening. The same is true for talking on the phone. Instead of having me use the steering wheel or reach the center console to select the phone menu, I can simply point to the HUD and say, phone. And I see that Moby has the phone ready. Then all I say is, call Kim Lipman, and Moby places the call. Yeah, so MOBI is an experiment that we're conducting in conjunction with Intel, and it stands for Mobile Interior Imaging. And what we're doing is taking advantage of sensors that are in the vehicle, in addition to advanced visual systems as well, to both detect and authenticate the driver, as well as enable the driver to do things in a much more seamless, uh, an easier way that helps them concentrate on the driving, keeping their eyes on the road and their hands on the wheel, but interacting with the vehicle in a, in a much more effective way. So it, it begins actually with being outside the vehicle, for instance, and understanding and authenticating once you move into the vehicle. So with the visual systems in the vehicle, we're looking at the capability of being able to authenticate that driver and verify that, okay, you're the driver, you can operate the vehicle, but also with that authentication, we're able to personalize that experience. So if we can authenticate the driver, then we can populate the system with your contact information, with the routes that you're going to be driving, 
personalize it for you. Really? It's in the early experimental stage, but I think the important thing is to understand that Ford is exploring this territory and we're all about enhancing the driver experience, enhancing our customers' ability to interact with their vehicle and interact with us as a company. So I guess you probably thought about this, but how do you get kind of past the, I would call it the, you know, the Google Glass factor where people feel uncomfortable having cameras record them even though these cameras are providing benefits that somehow enable yeah, their two, lives to be better. Yeah, I'd say two things. First of all, um, that's why we're experimenting. Yeah. I mean, we're, so we're understanding how people will react to this. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll test it with some, with some consumers in real world environments to understand how they react to it, how can we improve it. And then the other thing is we always want to do things based on the consumers giving us explicit permission. So we'll let you know how the system works. We'll let you know how we'll take advantage of the data that, 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 that the system uh, could, uh, could, could bring in. And again, it's going to be your decision. We're not going to force this on right. any consumer should we go forward with something like this in the future. In your um, opening talk, you said that Ford does not track people. Like, right. Can, can you talk about that? Can you talk about how what, what you do with that data that it is in the car and how you use it? As yeah, and, and, and it. so the one thing is w w people may think we're able to monitor and track and right. know where vehicles are going. We don't track vehicles. There's only certain instances in which the vehicle transmits data wirelessly. And all those instances have to do with consumers making requests for either services or information. And so I talked about the example of 911 Assist, for instance, where the cell phone in the vehicle um, will take advantage of information that we're able to send from the vehicle directly to a public safety answering place. You know, like my iPhone, right? The operating system will you know, automatically update itself when there's a new version mm -hmm. of it. And of course, I've always wondered why car operating systems don't do that. Is Ford moving in that direction where Sync, you know, the newer version of it will automatically update or the dealer can update it? So we, all, we already do updates of Sync. Right. Um, we do updates through a USB. As we go forward, we're looking at de delivering the capability of doing that wirelessly. And we have to look at smart devices as a model for what consumers are thinking about in terms of capabilities and how, how we go forward in the future. We candidly have to make some decisions about should they be automatic, should they be based on the consumer's request, but again, that's an area that we'll experiment in and we'll, we'll move very, very carefully to understand and do it in a way that best makes sense for the customer. So is that big brother or innovative technology or a little bit of both? Of course, time will tell. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car here from Ford's annual New Trends Technology Conference. Check out tflcar.com for more everyday real-world reviews. I will see you next time.